Hi, my name is Scarlett and I'm an atheist and skeptic and today I have three really short pieces of stupidity for you. Just random TikToks that amused me for various reasons. There are barely any arguments to speak of in these, just half-formed thoughts that someone decided to upload to TikTok. So no blibbity blab here, no central thesis, we're going in straight to the first piece of silliness. Let's see what it is. So fun fact, you cannot be atheist and also proselytize atheism. I want us all to appreciate the common misspelling of atheist and atheism. I wonder if it's because people confuse our superlative adjective form, you know, happy, happier, happiest, with the IST ending indicating, you know, a person. So instead of thinking an atheist is a person who is a non-believer, who is with non-theism, they think it's like you are athy, or maybe you can be athier, and then of course, when you're at the most, you are atheist. Atheist, atheist. I don't know how you would pronounce it if that was the form, but I'm the most atheist of the athe atheists, or something like that. Now, I don't know what this person means by proselytize. There are a couple of meanings in the dictionary. If she means recruit to one's faith, then correct, because atheism isn't a faith. But it can also mean to recruit to a cause. Anyway, I just wonder why she is making this point at all. Are there atheists out recruiting people? I know there are lots of atheists out here making ourselves known, telling our stories, explaining why we don't accept theistic claims, maybe talking about why we deconverted from some religion, or just clarifying what atheism is because there are so many misconceptions. There are atheists on blogs writing this stuff and here on the old YouTubes yapping away like myself here. And there are secular organizations that promote various causes, political, environmental, scientific, and more, all from a non-religious viewpoint. Or does she just mean we should shut up and not talk at all, not share what we think? Let's keep watching and see if she explains herself anymore. Those two things do not go together. That's like saying you are a punk Trump supporter. I'm not sure why the comparison to be made is to politics, but I guess the point is punks were nonconformists, anti-establishment rebels who wanted to stick it to the man, and Trump supporters are reactionaries who want to make the establishment great again. And I guess I can agree in the sense that atheists don't want the established religion to stomp all over their rights and they don't want to return to religious hegemony, but both punks and Trump supporters have the right to explain why they feel the way they feel, and try to convince people that their point of view is right. So wouldn't atheists also have the right to explain why they feel the way they do? Again, not quite sure what this person means by proselytize. You see, you see, you, you cannot, you can be one of those things. You cannot be both of those things in their truest sense at the same time. They are antithetical to one another. You see, does that make sense? No, you haven't really explained yourself. You did not explain what you meant by proselytize. You did not exactly make the connection with your analogy. And I think here you mean antithetical, not antithetical or whatever. Is that supposed to be a plan words with theist? The misspellings alone sort of sink it for me. Anywho, I think this is a person who is mistaking atheism for nihilism, like so many people do. And how can you try to convince someone to join your faith or cause if you don't believe anything? But atheists aren't nihilists, or not necessarily. We can talk about why we reject religious arguments, why we left a religion if we did, and we can clarify misconceptions about what atheism is, which is a lot of what atheist channels and blogs are about. And atheists can respond to questions about how they go about constructing their beliefs in the absence of the structure religions provide. And by the way, not everyone speaking is necessarily trying to recruit others. Maybe they just want to be understood. I think a lot of atheists online are actually just trying to explain themselves and show why stereotypes of atheists are wrong. That atheists are just normal people, we can be moral, and we can lead meaningful lives in the absence of any kind of religious structure. I did try to see if this person has any other Christian TikToks to see if there was something more clear, but I couldn't find anything else. She has a lot of random stuff, and it's not all that interesting. And this one really isn't either. She makes an unsupported assertion that she doesn't clarify and tries to make an analogy that doesn't really work. 
She's saying that atheists can't do a particular activity that theists can do, proselytize, because that would be like punks being Trump supporters. But those are identities, not activities. And sure, they do activities, but we're talking activity versus identity. You know, it's not quite the right analogy. And all these terms would need more clarification. But really, at the end of the day, I think what she really thinks is atheists should shut up and not talk about atheism. Let's go on to the next piece of silliness. Do you know that Google has 2.5 billion lines of coding, 25,000 engineers, computers, databases across the globe to keep this thing going? To keep this thing going? Do you mean to do the work that Google wants to do? Is that the thing you're talking about? This video is one of those why I'm not an atheist ones and has a comparison between Google and some unspecified you. Can you guess where we're going? If you said the argument from design, you win. Your prize is watching more stupidity. Did you also know that one cell that weighs a few thousand millionths of a gram in your body has 3.2 billion letters of coding? You're 40 trillion cells inside your body. I am not a scientist. At most, I enjoy reading about science. So someone with more science than I can help me understand the coding in the human cell. What he's talking about is DNA, right? Our cells contain DNA. And the DNA is unique to us, but it's not like the 40 trillion cells all have unique coding, right? Like just replicating what other cells have. And also DNA is not like letters or symbols, but chemicals, right? We've attached letters to the chemicals to distinguish them because that interests us and it's easy for us, but it's not like it really is a code. But really right now, what I think we're doing is use big numbers to set up an argument from ignorance. Ooh, big number. How can big number just happen? Ooh, like stars are also big and solar systems are complex. Maybe they needed a mind to organize them too. You and I are a system that is far more complex than Google. So what if I told you that Google came about by millions of years of natural processes? Would you believe me? This is the silliest design argument I've heard. This guy looks like he was born way after the start of Google. So from his perspective, it's always been around. But I can remember a time when we didn't even have personal computers, much less anything like Google. But if you were young enough to think it has always been around, the fact that we know Google is a company with a number of computer products and is synonymous with online searches should tell you that that is something different from the human body, whether it's complex or simple, it doesn't matter. And, you know, we can look up when Google started. We can see who started it. We can track its growth. We can talk to people who've worked for Google. Companies are human inventions. It's very different from human bodies, which happen naturally. I mean, sure, the time is there. But how could something so complex come without a mind behind it? No one can choose to believe that the complexity of you and I came without the guidance of a conscious mind. But it takes a lot of faith to believe that. It actually takes zero faith. I know it's amazing we're conscious and self-aware and can do some cool mental stuff, but other animals also have mental tasks they do. So you can see how our specific physical situation and mental situation evolved. What we don't have any evidence for is this mind that theists insist must be there creating all this stuff. All we have are stories and books about how an actual being came down and chatted with people and how this being did miracles. And nowadays, God seems to be great for helping find keys and parking spots, and that's all. Thankfully, that silliness is over. Let's end today's video with a channel favorite. In 1922, Brazil built this statue, and this is what they built 100 years later. And a look at stupid videos would not be complete without something from off the curb. This one isn't even about atheism. I just love his narrative style. What can I say? So yeah, Brazil built a statue and put it on a hill. Okay, fine. But then the whole country built that float? Or was it just some group curb? Anyway, it looks to me like it's a temporary float for carnival, not a permanent statue like that Christ Redeemer thing. Let's see if curb has a point. 
And although worshipping a statue of Christ is totally wrong, I cannot understand how the same city can worship this and this. Are they worshipping either of them? I don't doubt that a lot of Catholics pray in front of statues of Christ, but do they worship them as idols? I don't think so. I was raised Catholic, and it's true, there are a lot of statues, a lot of saints, and all that kind of thing, but it's not really thought of as worshiping the statue as an idol, but it's a way to imagine talking to the deity, that's all. But are they even worshiping a demon on that float? Curb is not a Catholic, so he probably doesn't understand the purpose of carnival and why people might construct scary floats depicting demons as part of that celebration. The guy probably doesn't even know what fun is, really. But I have to say, I don't think everything that is built of a religious nature is meant to be worshipped. Sometimes it's just symbolic of something. But listen to me. There are millions of Christians in Brazil who are heartbroken over the carnival. And some of them even believe that this was a warning from God. Were they heartbroken? Did they think that was really a warning? And a warning for what? And then what happened? Did something tragic happen? Please, Curb, we need to know. But whether you're from Brazil or not, every single one of us needs to turn from our wickedness and turn to Christ, because no one can guarantee to me that you'll still be alive tomorrow. And if you don't mind serious warning videos like this, please do subscribe. I don't know how this is a warning video. I don't know what wicked ways he's talking about. This story amounts to, Brazil has a big famous statue on a hill. Some people in Brazil made a float with a demon. Somehow this is the same to Curb and he is sure that they are both worshipped in the same way. I don't know. Then I guess lightning struck the statue of Christ Redeemer, not the demon, go figure. And this is a warning of something. And we don't know what. But Curb thinks it's a good time to tell people to repent and remind you you don't know when you're going to die. And then like and subscribe if you like warning videos. (laughs) This is why I like Curb. It's just a bunch of nonsense, and in his mind, it all adds up, but I have no idea what the point was supposed to be. All right, that is the stupidity that I have for you today. Did something strike you, or can you explain the science to me? Put that in the comments below. I love to read your comments, and while you're down there, if you haven't already, you can like and subscribe and do all the YouTube stuffing. Please do the YouTube stuffing so that Algorithmo has his ego fluffed and will give you lots of good recommendations after that. And if you like what I do, you can also buy me a coffee. That link is also in the description, and I will see you soon for something completely different or the same. It's going to be stupid, but I'll see you then.